everyone, Kleena here and welcome to this video where I'm going to be taking you through the solution to question 6 from this Leaving Cert higher level exam paper. This question is based on calculus, so let's get right into it. Question A asks us to differentiate f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 2 and it asks us to do this from first principles. So that just highlights the importance of reading the question. If you didn't read the full question and you stopped at differentiate and then your equation there, you would lose a good few marks because you're not differentiating from first principles. What we need to remember when we're doing our differentiation from first principles is the following formula and this isn't in the log table so you need to learn it off by heart. And that is the limit as h goes to 0 is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So this is a formula that you're going to have to learn off by heart. The first thing that you kind of need to work out is what is x plus h. So we have f of x. We know f of x is 2x squared plus 4x. When we're doing f of x plus h, all we're going to do is replace all of our x's by x plus h. So we're left with 2 x plus h squared plus 4 x plus h. So I'm going to work this out. So f of x plus h is 2 by x plus h by x plus h because it's squared plus 4 x plus h. So multiply these in here. So 2, just make one bracket, x by x is x squared and then you multiply x by h and then x by h again here. So you have 2 h x and then you're multiplying h by h so you get h squared. And then here you multiply in, so you have plus 4x plus 4h. So now I'm just going to multiply this 2 in here. So we're left with 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared. And then plus 4x plus 4h. So that is f of x plus h. So I'm just going to mark that there just for myself. So now let's move along and fill out our formula. So the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h, which is the one we've just worked out here. So we have 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus f of x. So we have minus f of x, which is 2x squared plus 4x, and that's divided by h. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply in that negative sign there. So we're left with the limit as h goes to 0. 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared, or sorry, 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4x plus 4h. Multiply the minus in here, so we have minus 2x squared minus 4x, and that's all divided by h. Now we can see that we can cancel up here. So we have 2x squared minus 2x squared, so we can cancel those. We also have plus 4x minus 4x so we can cancel those. So what are we left with now? The limit as h goes to 0 of 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4h divided by h. Now we can divide by h right across so that will leave us with the limit as h goes to 0. So get rid of this h, this h, one of these h's so you're getting rid of the squared sign and this h. So what are we left with now? 4x plus 2h plus 4. Now it's the limit as h goes to 0. So now, now is the time that we make h go to 0. So when h goes to 0, we're left with 2 by 0, which is 0. So the limit as h goes to 0 is equal to 4x plus 4. And that is our answer for this question. So you can see questions when you have to differentiate from first principles. They're quite tedious, but once you get the hang of how to do it, it's more of a manageable question than other differentiation questions. So for this question, you're going to get 15 marks. Now let's move on to question B. In question B, we're told that a rectangle is expanding in area. The width is X centimeters. Its length is always four times its width. We're asked to find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width when the area of the rectangle is 225 centimeters squared. So we're given an awful lot of information in this question. So I always find that it's easiest to break it down into what exactly you're given, so the important pieces of information you're given, and then the question that you're being asked. So first of all, we have the width. We're told that the width is x. We're also given the length indirectly. We're told that the length is four times its width, so it has to be 4x. Now we can work out the area, because the area is going to be length by width, so it's going to be x multiplied by 4x, which is 4x squared. Now what are we looking for? 
we're looking for the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width. So the rate of change, we're going to have dA, A being the area, all over dx. So this is what we're looking for. We can see that we have the area in terms of x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find dA dx by differentiating this here. So multiply 2 by 4 and that is 8x. So dA dx is 8x. But that doesn't complete our question because it asks us for the rate of change when the area of the rectangle is 225 centimeters squared. So when the area of the triangle is 225 centimeters squared, what is the width? What is x? So we can fill in for x here and then we can find our answer. So if the area, which is 4x squared, is equal to 225 centimeters squared, x squared is equal to 225 divided by 4, so I'm going to use my calculator for that. And that's 56.25. Now let's find the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared of x. The square root of 56.25 is 7.5. So x is 7.5. The width is 7.5 when the area of the rectangle is 225. So now we can find the rate of change of the area with respect to its width by filling it into this formula. So 8 multiplied by 7.5 and that is equal to 60. So the rate of change is 60, but now let's work out our units. So it's the rate of change of the area with respect to its width. So it's going to be 60 centimeters squared per centimeters. So centimeters squared is the units of the area and centimeters is the units of the width. So this is our final answer for this question. 60 centimeters squared per centimeter. And for this question, you're going to get 10 marks. Now, it's given you a bit of extra space. There's more space for this work on the next page. So use as much space if you need to. If that's not enough, go to the back of your paper. There's always going to be extra paper there. So now let's move on to question C, the final part of this question. In question C, we're dealing with some cubic functions. It tells us that the graph of a cubic function is shown in the first diagram between x is 0 and x is 4. We're told that the maximum value of p dash x, which we'll find when you differentiate p of x, in this domain is 1 and p dash 0 is minus 3 where p dash x is of course the derivative of p of x. We're asked to use this information to draw the graph of p dash x on the second set of axes below. I'm just going to write down the values that were given. So max of p dash x is equal to 1, p dash 0 is equal to minus 3 and I'm going to scroll down to where we have to draw the graph. What we need to remember when we're doing this question that the derivative of a cubic function, which is shown here, this is a cubic function, is a quadratic function. So a quadratic function is going to look like this, okay, if it's a negative quadratic function, or it's going to look like this if it's a positive quadratic function. Now, they're after giving us an awful lot of information for this question, they've told us that the maximum point is equal to 1, okay, where x is equal to 1. Now, this is going to be in the center because it's going to be a symmetric function. Another thing to remember that the point of inflection, okay, which is here of a cubic function, that's going to be the maximum or the minimum point for a quadratic function. So we have 2, x is equal to 2 when y is equal to 1, and that is our maximum point here. We're also told that when p dash 0, so when the derivative of p of x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 3. So that's another point here. Now we know that this must be symmetric. So the other point here where 4, x is equal to 4, y is going to be equal to minus 3 as well here. So that also means that when you draw this, it's also going to pass through here. And it's going to pass through here as a symmetric negative function. So how do we know it's negative? We know that it's negative because the cubic function ends facing downwards. If it ended facing upwards like so, then it will be positive. Okay, so it goes through the points minus 3, 1, 0, 2, 1, that's our maximum point, 3, 0, and 4, minus 3. So if you plot these points and you join them together, that is full marks and you're going to get 5 marks for this question. Okay guys, so that is all for this question. I hope that you found this video um, beneficial and that it might have cleared up any issues that you had going through the question yourself. So thanks very much for listening and I'll see you all in the next video.